Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today in the video, guys, we're going to be talking about drones. What kind of damage can you get from hitting a drone in mid-air? And what do we, as pilots, think about it? What can be done to mitigate the threat? Stay tuned. Wind 310 at 16, right, right. Third line at 3 right. Delta 260, reduce. Right guys, before I start with the video, I just want to remind you that if you like the kind of content that I'm creating on this channel, then I want you to subscribe to the channel and highlight the little notification bell. Because if you don't highlight the bell, you might not get notifications when I send out new videos or when I do live streams where I answer all of your questions. So subscribe and uh, highlight the bell. And also, if you like the video, give it a like and send in your comment about the video. Right guys, what we're seeing here is one of the major problems that uh, commercial aviation have with drone usage at the moment. This video is allegedly taken by a drone and it shows an Airbus 380 departing from Mauritius. And at the closest point here, this drone is estimated to be about two, um, two to maybe three wings away from the Airbus 380. Now, what you should understand is that the Airbus at this point will be traveling at around 230 knots or so, um, a little bit over 300 kilometers per hour. So there's no way that the operator of this drone would have any chance to do an evasive maneuver uh, if uh, they had you know, miscalculated the departure route or if the Airbus would suddenly turn. So this is extremely dangerous. Okay. But before we go into that, we need to talk a little bit about what a drone actually is. Um, a drone is a common name for anything that is unmanned and remotely controlled and flying around. You can find small drones, the micro drones that are like the size of my, um, my thumb, um, all the way up to drones that weighs tens of tons. The biggest at the moment is the Chinese Fei Hong 98 which is a drone that is capable of uh, carrying one and a half tons of payload for up to 1,200 kilometers. So that's a huge thing. And then you have the military use of the drones, the um, Predator drones that have been used in warfare for several years now, mainly for search and destroy missions that are extremely dangerous or um, for reconnaissance missions. But below that, you also have very good consumer use. You have things like news organizations tends to want to use drones uh, in order to get those good aerial views that would have required a helicopter before. You have drones that are being used to uh, survey crops and survey forest fires and the police are using them to a great extent to monitor um, accident sites and also to, um, to check, for example, speed controls. So what I want to, what I want to get to is that there is a fantastic amount of good usage for drones, right? It will drive down the prices on, on some of these gorgeous videos shot by drones that would have been, you know, required a air balloon or a helicopter before. And they're likely to see companies like Amazon, for example, um, using drones to deliver part, uh, parts and packages and stuff in a fairly near future. So this is fantastic. But what I want to talk about in this video is the not so fantastic side of drones. Okay. Now, the, <clears throat> the rise of the drones, sounds like something taken straight out of Star Wars, uh, started a couple of years ago. And it has you know, really exploded during the last two years, where very, very highly um, technical, very advanced drones can be bought for, you know, maybe a thousand euros and a little bit more. These are devices that can be controlled by GPS that are highly stable. And at the moment, there is no requirement to have any kind of certification or anything like that in order to purchase these drones. Now, what always happens when consumers suddenly get access to loads of new equipment is that things will start to happen before the regulating authorities, like the aviation authorities, have a chance to do something about it. They are always one, two, or three steps behind the users. And since there are now hundreds of thousands, if not millions of drones hitting the market every year, the risk of one of those drones being involved in an aviation accident is inevitable, unfortunately. We've already seen a few 
um, drone strikes. The first recorded drone strike was in uh, Canada back in 2017. And only a few weeks back, an Aeromexico Boeing 737 got its um, entire nose cone dented but by what they thought was a drone. Now, that hasn't been confirmed yet, but there is a big hole and no blood. And given my experience with bird strikes, there tends to be blood when that happens. But we don't have to go even that far back. Um, only last week, the, one of the biggest and most busy airports in the world during the Christmas uh, traffic was completely grinded to halt. So that was London Gatwick. Um, there were five or six drones that was reported sighted close to the runways, um, which forced the authorities to shut the airport down. Because that's how we work. Now, if you've been watching my videos up until now, you know that this is how we work in the aviation industry. If there is a risk, there is a threat out there, um, then the safest course of action will always be to just stop, divert, cease operation. Okay, and that's exactly what happened. So, are there any rules in force right now? Yes, of course there is. Um, the aviation authorities started seeing this threat long ago and they have rules in force. In fact, if you just got a drone in, you know, for, for Christmas, it's likely that you are, you know, that you're required to know these regulations before you start flying it, even if it's just a tiny drone in, indoors. Now, the rules differ between different uh, countries, but I would say, in general, they tend to be fairly similar. So I'm going to take the example of the rules from the United Kingdom. Um, in the United Kingdom, you're not allowed to fly a drone closer to a vehicle, a building or a person than 50 meters. Okay, you have to be 50 meters away at any point. You're not allowed to fly them higher than 400 feet. And that's because the small general aviation air aircraft tends to fly at the absolutely lowest altitude of 500 feet. So that gives a 100 feet buffer. Um, you are under no circumstances allowed to fly closer to an airport than 1000 meters. Now, in my opinion, that is way too close, but this is likely something that will be you know, kind of renewed after the Gatwick incident as well. And you always need to be within 500 meters of the drone if you're operating it, and you need to have it in your line of sight. This means that even though you have GPS routes that you can use, you still need to be able to see the drone. All right? You can't send the drone away on a mission and then fly back to you without you actually seeing the drone. Now, these rules are already in force, and if you break these rules, there are fines in force as well. So, if you break the rule, for example, by getting closer to the airport than the 1,000 meters, well then, you are in fact endangering the safety of an air aircraft, and that can bring you fines in the tens of thousands of euros, and you actually have prison sentence as part of the punishment scale as well. So, it is there. The problem is enforcement. Okay, the problem is for the authorities to be able to enforce all of these rules. What we are afraid of, what I as a commercial pilot is afraid of, is of course to fly into one of these things. Right? I know that most of the people out there that are using the drones right now close to airport, they're not doing it maliciously. Well, the Gatwick attack might be a different thing. But most of them just want to get cool pictures of an airport or of an aircraft taking off or landing in the sunset. I get that. But what you have to understand is that a drone weighing more than one kilo meeting an aircraft that is traveling at 300 kilometers per hour or more, which we can do close to an airport, is going to impact the aircraft like a bullet. Okay? Um, the uh, University of Dayton have a research institute. So the University of Dayton Research Institute, they made a test where they simulated a general aviation wing being hit by a drone at a normal cruising speed. So that cruising speed will be less than what we have as approach speed on a 737. Now, what I want you to look at in this video is how the drone impacts the wing. What you'll notice is that it will shatter the leading edge of the wing but that's not the point. The point is what happens after. And that is that the drone just keeps going. So it doesn't just splatter out, it continues into the wing. And it will damage components inside of the wing. That includes, uh, but it's not limited to, for example, the main wing spar. You know, it could be damaging the actual structural integrity of the wing. 
but also inside of the wing we have our fuel cells we have hydraulics uh, fuel lines we have rudder uh, controls things like that that the drone could potentially damage as well now this is different from a bird strike because as you know, the airport doesn't shut down just because there are birds around. When a bird impacts a wing, uh, it will also potentially, depending on the weight, uh, shatter the, uh, the, the leading edge part. But it will then shatter itself as well. So it will not enter the wing and it will not cause internal damage inside of the wing. And that's different. That's why a, um, a cannonball was made out of metal and not out of chicken. Right? Makes sense if you think about it. And this, of course, is what we pilots are afraid of. Because if it hits the wing, that's one thing. But it could also hit an engine and cause it an engine failure on short final. Or it could hit the, um, the, um, the windows, the cockpit windows, and potentially both shatter the windows and hurt the pilots inside. These things, they are small as well. Very, very hard to see. So it's likely that the first thing that the pilot would ever notice when they hit the drone is when we actually impacted the drone. We won't have time enough to see it and certainly not have time enough to maneuver away from it. So these things are dangerous and should be kept well away from airport and anywhere where you can find commercial aircraft. Right. So what can be done about this then? Um, well, it is very likely that the last, uh, you know, the, the things that happened in Gatwick, the drone strikes that we've seen happening is going to cause the... Um, authorities to act. So what I would guess personally is that it's going to be much much harder to buy a drone. So there is already certification in force. Most countries or at least some countries have courses that you can take in order to both learn all the rules regarding drones and also learn um, how to safely operate them. You know when it's windy what do you do? How do you operate it? How do you keep it away from people? I highly recommend you that if you want to, um, to buy a drone and use it for professionally or semi-professionally that you take one of these courses because it is likely that because of the maluse of people without common sense is going to cause people that are law-abiding that want to do a good job that want to use the drones in a good way to have to take these certifications. So I guess in the future that you are going to need a certificate to buy a drone and that the drone is going to have a registration number that can be tracked so that you as a owner are responsible for what that drone end up doing. That, that's what I think will happen and I think that must happen in order to keep us all, the traveling public and you, safe out there. That's it, guys. That's what I had about drones. That was my view about drones. Now, if you want to continue this discussion, if you want to ask me some questions, then let's head over to the Mentor Aviation app chat. All right? You can ask me questions directly there. Just tag at Mentor. That's going to send a push notification to me. So when I have my mobile phone up, I'll try to answer it for you. But you'll find loads of people in there. Pilots, pilot students, aviation enthusiasts, flight spotters, flight simmers, loads of people who love aviation. That's what I wanted to, uh, you know, create that app in the first place. So if you haven't already downloaded, you have download links down here. It's free to download. Check it out. Join me in the chat and check out one of the videos. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are out there in the world. And also, Happy New Year to all of you. See you all in 2019. Bye-bye. Bye, team! -bye.